Well, look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market of Paul, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. The certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? In other words, do you want to have healing? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. In other words, he couldn't get there quick enough. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore uh, said unto him that was cured, It is a Sabbath day, it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, uh, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was. In other words, the one that was healed didn't know who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, the multitude being in that place. In other words, the Lord Jesus Christ had gone away, and this man who was healed didn't know where the Lord Jesus Christ had gone. Afterward, uh, Jesus um, findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, uh, or said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. In other words, the, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that healed him. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him, so they tried to kill him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. And they had a problem with that. They thought that, you know, on the Sabbath day you're not allowed to do anything like healing anyone. And they were taking the law to the extreme. Basically, God had never instructed that at all. But they were just taking things to the absolute extreme, that which we're pretty good at. And, uh, yes, and therefore uh, did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered uh, them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. There was no haziness in the minds of these Jewish people whatsoever. They knew that the Lord Jesus Christ was saying that he was equal with God, and he is. Why? Because he is God. God manifest in the flesh. One of his titles is Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. To think that God humbled himself so much and came down and was clothed with a perfect body in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we see Jesus, who was made a little low and the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. He died on the cross for each and every one of us, every man, woman, boy and girl. He wants us to be in heaven, but we cannot be in heaven apart from putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who was crucified upon the cross can be your saviour here right now. I wonder will you come to Christ this hour? In all your sin, in all your need, realise you cannot save yourself, cannot get to heaven by doing good works of any description. We're shut up to the salvation of the Lord. Salvation is of the Lord. We're ever going to be saved, left to be God's work. 
And God has moved, God has sent forth his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, down from heaven to die upon the cross for you and for me, so that you and I could be rescued from going down to hell. God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why we come as gospel preachers. God is giving you another opportunity of getting right with him, of receiving forgiveness for your sins. And that forgiveness is only available because of the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried. But praise God the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He wants to save your soul here this hour, my friend. Will you come to Christ for salvation? Will you admit the fact that you're a, you're a sinner before God? It's called repentance. It's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and God promises you everlasting life. So this man here, he was uh, healed and uh, I mean you and I could be healed as well and I'm not talking about physical healing now, I'm talking about spiritual healing. You and I need salvation for our soul. We need forgiveness for our sins. Otherwise we'll never ever be able to enter into heaven. Why? Because of our sin. Our sins are shutting us out of heaven, my friend. And the only way your sins can be forgiven is if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And these people understood what the Lord Jesus was saying. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing uh, of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. You see, the Son is the perfect servant of the Lord God in heaven. You see, the perfect servant went to the cross of Calvary for you and for me to be crucified for you and for me because of our sin. You and I who are guilty of sin and we're heading down the hill, God does not want that for us. He wants you to be saved. And that's why we come here as gospel preachers this hour to bring you the message of hope and salvation, the love of God, but also the wrath of God if you refuse the love of God. And that's up to you. Depends where you want to be in eternity. I won't say spend eternity because it can't be spent. It's absolutely forever and ever. We cannot wrap our minds around eternity. It's just beyond our feeble minds to appreciate the fact that eternity is forever. It's either going to be in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ by putting our faith in him as our saviour or it's going to be down in the lake of fire and brimstone which God definitely doesn't want. He doesn't want you to go down to hell and the lake of fire. He wants you to be, he wants to save your soul this hour, my friend. The only way you can do that is if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God. For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For the Father loveth the Son and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him the greater works than these that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, that means makes them alive, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So we see here that the Father is not going to judge you if you die without Christ. It's going to be the Son that's going to be your judge. And just don't forget that he can be your saviour this other. That's exactly what he wants. He wants to be your saviour and not your judge. But you must make that decision. If you leave this earth without the Lord Jesus Christ, you're in big trouble with God Almighty. You will face the wrath of Almighty God for all of eternity in the lake of fire and brimstone. God does not want that for you. And that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to hang upon the cross to be uh, crucified, lifted up from earth, between heaven and earth, he was hanging, and he bore our sins in his own body on the tree. When he took the sinner's place on that cross, 
He can be your savior this other one, I think. That's what he wants. He wants to be your savior, but you've got to put your faith in him. If you don't put your faith in him, you'll never ever be in heaven. It's very simple. He that hath the Son hath life. In other words, spiritual and eternal life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So it's either one or the other. I don't know what side of the cross you're on, whether you're on the right side of the cross or the other side, but you need to get on the right side of God. You know, it's like that with people on earth, isn't it? We like to be on the right side of people. We don't like them to be angry with us and whatever. But when we think about God, who can stand up to God? If he gets angry, look out. God is angry with the wicked every day. That is, those who are not his children because of their sin. But he's able to forgive you of all of your sins here this other. And that's why we come here as gospel preachers. That is, good news, preachers, because gospel means new good news. That's how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that your soul can be saved. That's what God wants. He wants to save your soul right now. He wants to forgive you of all of your sins, no matter what you've done. Even if you've killed someone, you can be forgiven, my friend, by the God of heaven. See, there's only one true and living God. We see him fully displayed in the person of Jesus Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So when we look at the Lord Jesus Christ, we see God. God in a body. God had to take upon himself a body so that he would die on the cross for you and for me. Because we know that God is eternal. But he had to take upon himself a body that he might die on the cross as the, as the one that would had to uh, pay the full payment for our sins. Our sins that have separated ourselves between God and ourselves, and yet there is a way back to God. And that way is through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, when He wants to save your soul right now. Are you saved? Are you a child of God? Yes, for as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, or makes them alive, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So we see here, as I said before, that the Lord Jesus Christ, he's either going to be your Saviour or he's going to be your judge. Why don't you want the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Saviour? Why would you rather prefer to have him as your judge? It just doesn't make sense. God has provided the way of escape through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no need to go down to hell. It's your decision, though. If you de desire, you can reject the Lord Jesus Christ or neglect him. Don't forget, it's the same outcome. It's hell and the lake of fire for all of eternity. If you die without the Lord Jesus as your Saviour, he will be your judge. But all men should honour the Son, even as they honour the Father. He that honoureth not the Son, honoureth not the Father, which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, or truly, truly, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. That's a present possession for all those who put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who died on the cross to be your saviour this hour, my friend, hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation or judgment, but is passed from death unto life. Now, you must understand that you and I are dead spiritually as far as God's concerned. We're actually the, the children of the devil. I'm not saying your dad's the devil, but what I'm saying is this. Spiritually speaking, God classes us as the children of the devil. And true, we've been born again, of course. When we be born again into God's family through faith in Christ, well, then we become one of his children. See, God doesn't want us to remain away from him. He doesn't want us to remain as enemies to him. Now, God, God's not the one that's caused the problem. You and I have, because of our sin and our wickedness before the Lord, our disobedience before him. This is why we need forgiveness for those sins. If we receive forgiveness for our sins, it'll mean that we can enter into heaven because we have the righteousness of God given unto us through faith 
in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I just repeat that verse again, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation or judgment, but is passed from death unto life. That's what we need. We need life. There's no need to stay in a, a state of spiritual death before the Lord. We need to be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. In other words, they will hear the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who is saying these things. And they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. See, the Lord Jesus Christ is the perfect man, the only perfect man that walked the face of the earth. He wants to be your Saviour here at this Arvo. So, if you put your faith in him, your soul will be saved. If you don't, your soul will remain in a lost condition, heading down to hell because your sins have not been forgiven. But I'm here to tell you this other that your sins can be forgiven. And that's exactly what God wants for each and every one of us, that our sins will be forgiven so that we can enter into heaven. You cannot be in heaven apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, apart from believing upon him, receiving him, as your saviour so that he won't be your judge. It's either one or the other, saviour or judge, it's up to you. Yes, and have given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. God does not want any of us to be in the resurrection of damnation. He wants us to be in the resurrection of, uh, what does it say here, in the resurrection of life. But the only way you can be in the resurrection of life is if you put your faith in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, if you believe upon him, if you put your faith alone in Christ, your soul will be saved. That's what God wants. He wants to save your soul, this other, my friend. But you need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be, or to become, a child of God. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Yes, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. And this is what we, we get out here as gospel preachers. We're saying these things so that you might be saved. So that you'll be saved by the grace of God, by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and receiving forgiveness for your sins. This is what we need so urgently. Forgiveness for our sins so that we can enter into heaven. You see, we cannot be in heaven because of our sins. Our sins are shutting us out of heaven. This is why we need forgiveness for those sins. And the only way is if we put our faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who loved us unto death, even the death of the cross. Cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. He was cursed so that you and I could receive a blessing, so that you and I could receive forgiveness for our sins. They're the things that we've done wrong in the sight of God. We've disobeyed the Lord. It's called sin in the sight of the Lord. So we need forgiveness for those sins, otherwise we'll end up dying and going down to hell. He was a burning and a shining light. This is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking of John the Baptist. 
and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which uh, the Father have given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. You see, the people looking at the Lord Jesus Christ should have recognized him for who he really is. He is the Christ. He's God's anointed. He's the one that the Father sent to be our Savior. And he wants to be your Savior this other, my friend. But you've got to put your faith in him. You don't put your faith in him, he won't be your Savior. He's available for the whole world to be saved. But unfortunately, the whole world will not be saved because they will not come in repentance toward God. As I said, they should change your mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. See, the people looking at the Lord Jesus Christ, seeing all his, his wonderful miracles which he did, that was proof that the Father in heaven had sent him. And we mustn't think that God's our Father. He's not our Father until we be born again. We are not all God's children. For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will become a child of God. When we're born in this world, we're children of the devil, spiritually speaking. And God wants us to have the new birth. He wants us to be born again. Wants us to be born from above, born into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Yes, and the Father himself which has sent me hath borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. And you have not his word abiding in you. For whom he has seen, him you believe not. So that is, they, you know, they've seen the Lord Jesus Christ physically, literally, bodily, in their presence, and he didn't, they didn't believe on him. But they should have, because he was there in their presence. But you and I need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. I know we can't see him physically. He's gone back to heaven. Why? Because he resurrected the third day. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So he's back in heaven, where he came from. He came down from heaven. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He was in heaven before, and he left heaven's glory to come down to sin-cursed earth, to live the perfect life that you and I could never ever live, and then Die the perfect sacrificial death upon the cross for each and every one of us. You and I who have sinned, we've done that which is wrong on the sight of the Lord. But God wants to forgive you all of your sin. He wants to give you a new start, so to speak. You've got to be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Search the scriptures for in them, in other words, search the Bible, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. You see, the whole Bible, the Old Testament as well as the New Testament, speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ who would eventually come and die on the cross for you and for me, be crucified because of our sin. Our sins are taking us down to hell and God does not want that. He wants you to be in heaven. But the way to get to heaven is by coming in repentance toward God, that is, as I've said, a change of mind, Simply go straight to God, agree with him. Yes, I realize that I am a sinner. And then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that God promises you everlasting life. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you will not come to me that you might have life. See, life is found not in a man-made religion, all the man-made religions take you down to hell, my friend. They're worse than useless. You've got to come to Christ to be saved. You've got to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And you will not come to me that you might have life. See, so if they really looked into the Scriptures, they would see the Lord Jesus Christ on its pages. 
in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. It speaks of the coming Messiah. It speaks of the coming Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. But have your sins been taken away? Have your sins been totally blotted out, washed away in the precious blood of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the one who's able to save your soul right now? Are you ready to meet God? Yes! Thank you. Is God real? Yep. Thank you, sir. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ is able to save your soul, my friend. If you come to Christ, you put your faith in him, your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When will you come to Christ for salvation? Will you put your faith in him? It doesn't matter what profession we have, what we do is a job. We all need God's salvation. We need forgiveness for our sins by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. By putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we can become children of God. And that's exactly what God wants for each and every one of us, that we would be saved, that we would come to faith in Christ, the only Saviour for us sinners. You see, when we're born in this world, we're born as a sinner. God wants to make you into a saint. God wants to give you his righteousness, which means that you can enter into heaven. So we cannot be in heaven because of our sins. Our sins have shut us out of heaven. There's no way that we can get into heaven without the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one you've got to come to know, my friend, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he can be your saviour right now if you put your faith in him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Will you put your faith in Christ and become a child of God for all eternity? You can never ever lose your salvation, my friend. If you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved for time and for eternity. I receive not honour from men, these are the Lord Jesus, uh, words of the Lord Jesus Christ, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If an another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honour one of another, and seek not the honour that cometh from God only? Look, who cares what people think? So what if they think you're an idiot if you're a Christian? It doesn't matter. Wouldn't you rather be in heaven? Why go down to hell with them? There's no point. God has made the way of escape through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and there's absolutely no need for you to go down to hell and burn in that terrible place of suffering and burning and torment. God does not want that for you. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yeah, thumbs up. Praise the Lord. Yes, um, how can you believe which receive uh, honour one of another and seek not the honour that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Yes, you see, the law was given by Moses but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And you, you see, the, the way to heaven is not by keeping any commandments. It's by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's by putting our faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. As he said to you, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. So we need to understand that the law was given as our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might see where we've gone wrong. So we've all broken the commandments of the Lord, and because of that we're heading down to hell, and God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to die upon the cross for you and for me, and take our place as the sinless substitute that took the sinner's place upon the cross so that you and I could be saved. What the way to heaven? That's right. God bless you. Yes, but if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my word? So 
As I said before, the whole Bible speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's speaking about the coming Messiah, the coming Saviour. And then in the New Testament, we read that he did come. He was born. Remember, he was born in Bethlehem of Judea, and he was born of a virgin. Why is that important? He had to be born of a virgin because he's without sin. See, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ is not Joseph. If the father of our Lord Jesus Christ was Joseph, that means he was a sinner like you and I, but he's not. The Lord Jesus Christ was, or was conceived of the Holy Spirit inside of Mary's womb. It's got nothing to do with man. He was born of the Holy Spirit. In other words, he does not have the sinful nature that you and I have. You know, the thing that tells, tells us just do what you want, how you want, when you want, without any regard for anyone, even God. We just do our own thing, just do it, so to speak. And that's what we're like. We're rebellious as far as God is concerned. And we need to understand that that rebellion is going to end up landing us in hell because of our sins, because of our rebellion against the Lord. But the Lord wants you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to save your soul this hour, my friend. And if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you receive the forgiveness for your sins, you receive the righteousness of God by faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And you'll have everlasting life, a home in heaven, through all of eternity, and also peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that peace can be yours, absolutely free of charge, if you come to Christ and believe upon him. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever and eternally too late. There's no need to go down to hell, you can be in heaven. The moment you die, through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Again, come in repentance toward God, change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and God promises you everlasting life. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. That spiritual and eternal life is found in a person. As I said, it's not in a man-made religion. Man-made religion is worse than useless. It will take, take you down to hell. You need to come to Christ to be saved. You need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. If you're interested in this, look me up. YouTube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great day.